Indeed, when undertaking research, the usual method is to form a hypothesis, then test it with experiments. Those experiments reveal facts and falsehoods, yet sometimes they also unveil an exception. You seem to be that exception when it comes to my crest research. Worry not, Professor. Exceptions are what make my work interesting. Why, I will find out eventually. I feel it is my destiny as a crest scholar. After we cross the Great Bridge of Murden, we'll be in my father's territory. We actually crossed it five years ago for the Battle of the Eagle and Lion, remember? Oh, this is terrifying. What am I gonna do? I gotta get a grip. Oh, no, no, no. You should pray we don't run into him at all. The front lines cover a long stretch of land, you know? So the Boar Prince is dead. Decapitated, I hear. I haven't seen the severed head myself. Perhaps he's still alive and leading that army. Don't patronize me. If his head is still attached to his body, I'll remedy that without hesitation. Either way, a major battle awaits us. Try not to die. I'd be annoyed if you did. Hey, uh This won't... I seem to lack the skills required to grieve for the dead. If someone has passed, even someone dear to me, I could stand about and wail or get on with my life. While I'm at it, that whole idea that we must speak well of the dead, I don't understand that either. If I didn't like them when they were alive, then why pretend to do so when they are no longer here? Lion, has it truly been five years since then? Can you recall whether it was before or after I joined your class, Professor? That is not at all the case, Professor. Your memory serves you poorly. It was shortly after I joined your class. I remember it like it was yesterday. We captured the Great Bridge of Murden, but the fight has only just begun. Enbar, the Imperial capital, lies far to the south beyond Grander Field. And waiting for us on the way there is the entire Imperial army, with twice as many troops as us. We had better brace ourselves. Thanks to our victory, I've been able to study the Great Bridge of Murden at my leisure. And you know what? It's an astounding structure. So much history there. Imagine how much time and effort it must have taken to build something that big. Over water, no less. I hope that someday, it will be opened up to the people of Fodlin. A historical site, rather than a military checkpoint. Time's come to fight the Empire, huh? Wow, it's shaping up to be quite the battle. And I've got no problem with that. But that mystery army really worries me. There's no indication if they're friend or foe. Who do you think they are, Professor? <laughs> Not unless he rose from the grave to secure revenge. That would mean... Actually, I have no idea what that would mean. Well, whoever they are... I hope we can avoid fighting them. Okay. <sighs> so, we're finally moving into enemy territory. We can expect the war to get even more intense from here on out. 
I'm really feeling the tension now. I have almost no experience with battles of this scale. Professor, I'll be grateful for your leadership on the battlefield. I know I can trust you. Since Little Claude became their leader, the Alliance Lords haven't been especially unified. Now they're suddenly united for a common cause. As a result, the Empire hasn't been able to perform even one successful incursion. Rather, we're the ones who might get the jump on them. It's incredible. Magical. Maybe his strategic genius was simmering for those five years, and it returned to a full boil once you two were reunited. Or maybe he always knew he'd meet you again. And he was preparing for that this whole time. Hmm. Word just reached me that the Empire has stationed soldiers in Fort Mercius. If they decide to dig in their heels and defend the fort, we'll be in a difficult situation. I hear it's an impregnable keep, surrounded by high ramparts. Taking it would not be easy. I could use a hand. Professor. Beyond the Great Bridge of Murden, it's all unfamiliar territory for us. We don't know where Lady Rhea is being held. We ought to investigate all potential locations thoroughly. The Knights of Saros will handle the search. We'll report back if we learn anything. all contact with my family since joining this fight. Were I to see soldiers of the Galatea family amidst the host flying the royal family's banner, I... All chance of reconciliation with my father would end there. I do not know if that is the right path, but the fact is, I've come this far. There's no time for second guessing. Not anymore. Edelgard's presence suggests that Hubert is around, too. He is minister of the Imperial household, after all. He's been around Edelgard since they were children. I suppose he must be pretty happy. Greetings, Professor. Nothing to report. I hear we're sending troops to Grander Field next. Is that what's what? That whole area is in the territory of House Berglitz. It's famous as the main granary of Fodman. If we could capture it, we probably wouldn't have to worry about food anymore. Bread for all! Lady Rhea. I've got to keep this place clean, and I mean properly clean, every day. Dust it, sweep it, everything. You never can tell when Lady Rhea might be back. Since you secured the Great Bridge of Murden, trade got a lot easier within the Empire. Nevertheless, profits are rather thin compared to how it was five years ago. You can't be much of a trader unless you're prepared to traverse the whole of Fodlan. Reconnaissance is becoming more of a risk the deeper we move into enemy territory. If I don't come back, assume I'm dead. I'm glad you think so highly of me, but we have to be realistic. Don't waste your energy worrying about me. Lady Rhea. Oh, I gotta say, it's tough to keep the fighting spirit alive when you recognize your enemies on the battlefield. So you can't avoid it, huh? How did everything get so messed up? Just because we're fighting someone doesn't mean we gotta hate them. That's probably the worst thing about war. Win or lose, I still get a bad taste in my mouth. That's so. 
If we defeat the Imperial Army at Grander Field, what will our next objective be? I guess we won't have much choice but to try to take Fort Mercius, on the far side of Grander Field. It's probably too soon for us to be thinking about that, isn't it? I'm sure it's already occurred to Claude, though. Huh? I hardly believe we're crossing the borders of the Empire to battle their army. I never thought you'd never guess from the calm looks on everyone's faces, though. I mean, we're probably all gonna die, let's be honest. If you don't mind me saying, you don't look like you're in the middle of a crisis either. Oh, um, perhaps that was a little rude of me? Hmm, actually it's the Great Tree Moon now, isn't it? Not that anyone's in much of a mood to celebrate the new year, of course. So, we're finally going to set foot in the Empire. I'm starting to get a little nervous. I guess there's a good chance we'll be fighting more old friends from here on out. Claude was saying that our next battle might be in Grander Field. Is that right? Reminds me of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. But of course that was a very different time. When it was over, all three class heads complimented each other on their bravery. And then we had a party. But we can never go back to that, can we? Excuse me, could you do me a favor? Thanks so much. You're a sweetheart. The campaign continues, does it? Well, allow me, as a professional recluse with 10 years of experience, to volunteer for, um, staying behind. Oh, who am I kidding? The fighting won't stop until we've defeated Edelgard, will it? Or until we lose, I guess. But there's not much use in thinking about that. It's like this. I'm a graduate of the Golden Deer House. But that was a little before your time, Professor. We won the Battle of the Eagle and Lion. Of course, we mostly have Holtz to thank for that. And now, he's the greatest general in the Alliance. I didn't do so great in comparison. <sighs> Professor, we might see Edelgard herself leading the enemy in the next battle. If they're coming out of Fort Mercius, our troops might even clash on Grander Field. And those other troops on the march. Who knows what they'll do, or what side they'll take. Not sure how we're supposed to form a strategy with so many unknowns. Hey, how come you only ever flatter me in times like these? What am I supposed to make of that? Anyway, we've come this far. Let's just keep putting one foot in front of the other and see how far we get. The bridge of Murden was considerably better fortified than it was five years ago. The bridge was full of soldiers, and they all died. I'm glad I asked you. Huh? Um, I heard that some unidentified troops have appeared, but... Apparently, they were flying the flag of the Fargus royal family. 
Do you think it was Dimitri's ghost? His country was taken before he ever wore the crown. Surely he must regret that. seems filled with confidence, but I wonder if everything really will be okay. The Imperial Army might be hiding the Emperor, and the troops headed south might belong to the Old Kingdom. I'll be honest, I'm incredibly uneasy about all of this. But at this point, there's no option but to move forward. I trust you and Claude, but I feel uneasy. If we lose in the next battle, the Empire's army will likely come surging into Alliance territory. If that happens, my parents won't escape unharmed. They've raised their anti-imperial flag after all. Thank you, Professor. I'll fight with all I've got to. Speaking with you has eased my mind a bit. Just enough, in fact, to put me in the mood for sweets. Something else. House Gloucester has changed its allegiance and joined the faction that is against the Empire. The Alliance will thus remain united. But thanks to this latest ploy, my father is more suspicious of Claude now than ever, if such a thing is possible. Ordinarily, I might credit his helpful posture toward us to his devout faith in the Church of Seros. But it is clear to me now that this is nothing more than a shrewd calculation on his part. He is only thinking of his position. We are in the clear for now. But please bear in mind that the Alliance is never an entirely stable union. So, we're finally invading Empire territory, huh? There's not much we can do right now, except pray for deliverance. I truly believe that we have it in us to succeed. Hey there. We secured the win in our first skirmish, but the next battle is a different matter. The Empire will come after us with everything it's got. Even so, the ultimate victory will be ours. And I'm not just saying that. I've made ample preparations to ensure our victory. It's my rule to never leave victory to chance. You can't rely on the protection of the goddess. With your power and my schemes, I should be able to plot a direct course to victory. Right, right. If this mysterious military force is the remnants of the kingdom, I think there would have been the possibility of a united front. But from what I've heard, that's going to be difficult. Their behavior is very erratic. If they're clamoring for revenge and death, then it's probably better if we have nothing to do with it. Nobles who are changing allegiance again and again. I do not have understanding for that. How can you trust if treason comes with ease? How can you be calling yourself a noble? I do not have understanding of the reasoning. Surviving is more difficult without trust. There must be some other goal. the next battle could be a big one. Is that true? I miss the old days when if someone got hurt, we'd rush them to the infirmary and make them well. 
but on the battlefield, there's not enough time to help. People die. Professor, don't be one of those. Each time we press forward, our search for Rhea broadens to a wider area. I certainly hope we will find at least some clue. But I do suspect I already know where she is. If I'm right, then she is in the Imperial capital. And we cannot save her until we topple the Empire. I did not expect much from the dining hall, but this... This is... Somehow...
that Oh my f Remind when it was and then we had a hmm. So I guess I'm getting the huh? That's if we I get it, I'm sure. I've got the gist of it now. May I ask a question, Professor? What's it? Ready to hop. Will. It's within my grasp. I'm finally grasp. Uh -huh. I get it. I am grateful. Hmm. Very interesting. Oh, teach. How long have you been there? Don't sneak up on me like that. You almost gave me a heart attack. Anyway, I'm reading the official biography of the Four Saints, as sanctioned by the Church. I know you're not very familiar with the teachings of Seros, but even you must have read it at least once. Tell me again, how exactly did you manage to get a job teaching at an academy run by the Church? Well, whether you've read the biography or not, the Four Saints must at least ring a bell, right? Well then, I've got a little quiz for you. Name the Four Saints, companions of the great Saint Seros. I'll give you a hint. There was Keyhole, Sethleen, Indec, and... Who was the fourth one? Tough luck, that would be incorrect. The name you were looking for is Macuil. 
In any case, you can learn some interesting things reading about the life and times of Saint Macuil. For instance, he was more skilled with his hands than his fellow saints, he even became an accomplished blacksmith. He used his skills to forge countless sacred weapons for the army of Saros. Of course, he didn't just forge the weapons, he also used them in battle himself. Legends say his strength was second only to Saros. It's even said that he played a big role in the Battle of Teltine, where Saros fought Nemesis, the King of Liberation, who became the King of Evil. Macuil lost his life in that battle, and now his body rests in a coffin within the Holy Mausoleum. Or so one story goes. Another legend says he set off on a journey to find a new land. That he left Fodlan from the east, crossed the sea, and vanished. He must have left Alliance territory, but where exactly would he have set sail from, I wonder? Thinking about it reminds me of another interesting story concerning the Strang region. The peninsula is attached to the mainland of Fodlan and extends from the northeastern part of Kingdom territory. If you were to set sail from Margrave Edmund's territory, you could cut across a stretch of sea and land there. And it just so happens that in the Srang region, there are ruins built to worship the sacred beast that appeared from across the sea. If the ruins have something to do with St. Macuil, there could be sacred weapons there. So, have I piqued your interest, or what? You always have to play it cool, don't you? Just think of how useful it would be to have weapons like that. Not to mention that the peninsula would be pretty easy to get to about now, seeing as how Alliance territory has settled down a bit. We'd be there and back in no time. No one would even notice we were gone. Come on, Teach. I always see it through once I set my mind on something. Let's make the necessary preparations before I die of curiosity. There are the ruins. It looks like we're not going to have the luxury of an excavation. Look, I bet those are the watchmen of the ruins, and that they've been ordered to keep out intruders. And that big beast? I hear they call it the Wind Caller. Please, only by defeating me can you claim the 
a secret treasure. Yeah, it speaks. What is it? Huh? Who are you? Just here for a bit of treasure. Don't attack me. Someone got here first. Must be a band of looters. We can't let them get the treasure. Guess their luck's about to run out. Steady now. Crush them all. Shall we? A nobleman does his duty. One. My orders? My orders? What's my strategy? At the ready. Ready when you are. I'm your girl. Let's make this quick. I'll do my best. Shall we? Leave it to me. of Bodlin. You're not trying to take this treasure from me, are you? This is our chance. You can't if I don't get this treasure back, the boss is gonna be really angry with me. I have an idea. Huh? And you looting too? Well, I'm not letting you have this treasure. Shall we? Thank you. 
making progress. Apologies. I'll crush them all. yourself killed. Steady now. I can do this! I wasn't about to let you go. But... I shall not stray. I've got the Time to slow down. Greatness. No, 
That's my treasure. After all the trouble we went through to get this treasure, I'm not going to let you get your hands on it. Sorry, but I must. Uh, those thieves! No obstacle. I should never have become a thief. Don't get used to this. It was the least I could. Grandson of the grandson of the grandson of the elite Regan. Now tell me who you are. I am your family's enemy. If you carry the blood of the ten elites, you cannot be permitted to live. What do you mean by that? And what's that crest on your forehead? No more talk. If you wish to survive, you must destroy me. So close. Can't afford to slack off. Who stand before me? <laughs> 
thousands of years. Thousands. You have the stink of Sophis upon you. Let us find out whether you share her power. I wasn't about to let you go. Secret skin.
my orders? Crush them all. I'll do my best. Wow, thanks. Ready when you are. Steady now. It stopped moving. Is it dead? No. It seems it's just sleeping. I thought we were supposed to be given the treasure, but... Oh, forget it. I'll just have a look around there. What about this thing? Huh. I'll think about it later. Thanks for all your hard work, Teach. Sorry for dragging you along with me. I had no idea it would turn into a fight. But hey, at least we got some treasure out of it. I'll leave this in your capable hands. Do with it as you will. You know our friends even better than I do. Give it to whoever you think it'll suit best. More importantly, I didn't go there looking for treasure. Not really. Legends about the saints abound. It's hard to tell fact from fiction. I like to confirm whatever I can with my own eyes to find the truth in those legends. Not a thing. We didn't find anything concrete to prove that Saint Macuil had been there. We can't say for certain that the treasure we found was Macuil's either. I do wish we could have spoken to that wind caller a bit more. <laughs> Unlikely. Macuil lived thousands of years ago, and I've never heard anything about the saints being monsters like that. Wait a minute. Could the Windcaller have anything to do with the Immaculate One? The Immaculate One is a monster sent by the goddess. Could the Windcaller be... Where was it that I heard that stuff about them having been sent by the goddess? <sighs> Maybe I'm too tired. My head is heavy. I can't think straight anymore. Let's call it a day for now. I've got plenty of time to think this over. Like, follow, subscribe!